You know those cute little jellyfish you see floating at the beach? The translucent ones that just vibe near the surface? Well, the deeper you go in the ocean, the more those things turn into nightmare fuel. I am talking about jellyfish that look like they crawled out of a horror movie and decided the midnight zone was a good place to set up shop. Trust me, once you see what lurks down there, you will never look at a beach jellyfish the same way again. So what exactly is happening to these jellies as they descend into the abyss? Why do they get progressively more disturbing the deeper we go? Buckle up. We are about to take a journey from the sunlit shallows all the way down to depths where sunlight has never reached. I guarantee you are not prepared for what we are about to see. Let's start where most people know jellyfish from, the epipelagic zone, also known as the sunlight zone. This is the top layer of the ocean, from the surface down to about 200 meters. Here, we have the classic jellyfish experience. The lion's mane. Jellyfish is probably the most iconic species you will encounter in these waters. The bell can reach over seven feet across and their tentacles reach 120 feet, longer than a blue whale. These animals are basically the ocean's equivalent of that friend who takes up way too much space. Except instead of a couch, it is the entire water column. And instead of being annoying, they can sting you pretty badly. They can be kind of beautiful in a strange way. They are usually orange or reddish, almost tan in color, and they stay near the surface at depths of less than 20 meters. They are bioluminescent too, but their glow is a gentle nightlight compared to what we will see later. These surface dwellers feed on zooplankton, small fish, and even other jellyfish. Yes, they can sting humans, but it is usually temporarily painful. You will get some localized redness and discomfort, and you are unlikely to die. Oh, and I should mention the box jellyfish while we are up here. These creatures are legitimately terrifying even in shallow water. Found in tropical and subtropical waters, particularly around Australia and the Indo-Pacific, the Australian box jellyfish has a cube-shaped bell about 12 inches across and tentacles that can reach 10 feet. Each tentacle has about 5,000 stinging cells. 5,000. Their venom is considered the most deadly in the ocean. It can cause paralysis, cardiac arrest, and potential death within five minutes. The pain is described as excruciating, so intense that victims have gone into shock and drowned before reaching shore. Are they dangerous to humans? Yes, extremely. Moving on before I develop a new phobia. Now let's descend into the mesopelagic zone, the twilight zone, which extends from 200 to 1,000 meters deep. This is where things start getting legitimately weird. The sunlight here is faint, barely penetrating, and the temperature drops significantly. This is where we meet one of my personal favorites, the Atolla jellyfish, known as the alarm jelly. The Atolla is deep red in color, which makes it appear completely black at these depths since red light does not penetrate this far. It is like wearing camouflage, but making it fashion. Cool, I guess. What really makes the Atala stand out is that freakishly long trailing tentacle. It can be up to six times the length of the jellyfish's bell diameter. Scientists think this hypertrophied tentacle acts like a fishing line, dangling there passively and catching whatever drifts by. The Atala does not actively hunt. It is more of a set it and forget it approach to dinner. But here is where it gets wild. When the Atala is attacked by a predator, it does not just accept its fate. Oh no. This jellyfish literally screams for help. Well, not screams exactly. It launches a series of brilliant blue bioluminescent flashes that pinwheel around its body like an underwater rave. These flashes travel at speeds of five to 50 centimeters per second in circular waves, and they can be seen from 300 feet away. The purpose is simple. It is trying to attract an even bigger predator that might eat whatever is currently trying to eat it. It is basically yelling, hey, big scary thing, free lunch over here, and hoping the new arrival is more interested in its attacker than in the Atala itself. Scientists even created a device called the E-Jelly that mimics this alarm display, and they have used it to successfully lure rare deep sea animals, including, famously, a giant squid. Are they dangerous to humans? 
Not really. We do not typically swim at depths of 1,000 to 4,000 meters where these things live, and even if we did, their sting is not particularly threatening to us. Now we are dropping into the bathypelagic zone, the midnight zone, from 1,000 to 4,000 meters. It is called the midnight zone because it is pitch black. No sunlight reaches here at all. The pressure is crushing. We are talking 5,800 pounds per square inch. And yet, life persists. Weird, creepy, beautiful life. This is home to the giant phantom jelly, Stygio medusa gigantea, and holy hell is this thing impressive. The bell of this deep sea nightmare can be over three feet wide, but that is not even the scary part. It has four ribbon-like arms that can grow to over 33 feet long. 33 feet. That is about as long as a telephone pole. These are not tentacles. They are more like billowing curtains of death that trail behind the jellyfish as it moves. And unlike most jellies that use stinging cells to catch prey, the giant phantom jelly uses these arms to wrap up and trap its victims, hoisting them up to its mouth like some kind of gelatinous crane. The first specimen was collected in 1899, but scientists did not recognize it as a new species until 1959. And even now, it is incredibly rare. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute has completed thousands of dives, but has only encountered this species nine times. Nine times in decades of exploration, it has been spotted fewer than 120 times total since its discovery. Why so rare? Well, it typically lives at depths of up to 22,000 feet. That is over four miles down. The water pressure at that depth is absolutely insane. But the giant phantom jelly's gelatinous body just absorbs it like it is no big deal. When there is light, the giant phantom jelly appears a faded reddish-orange color but at the depths where it normally lives, red light cannot penetrate, so it is basically invisible. It is like the ultimate stealth predator. Scientists believe it may emit faint bioluminescence, possibly to communicate or confuse predators, but we are honestly not sure. Are they dangerous to humans? Technically, no, since they do not have those classic stinging tentacles but I am not exactly volunteering to swim next to a 33-foot-long ribbon monster in the pitch-black abyss. Oh, and here is a weird bonus fact. The giant phantom jelly is one of the few jellyfish species that gives birth to live young. The babies develop inside the mother and then detach from inside her bell and swim out of her mouth. Out. Of. Her. Mouth. Nature is wild. But wait, it gets weirder. Let's talk about the abyssal comb jelly, Baro abyssicola. Now, technically, this is not a true jellyfish. It is a tenophore, or comb jelly, but it is close enough. And it is absolutely worth mentioning because of how creepy this thing's adaptation is. This predator is pretty pink in color, which might sound cute until you realize why. In the midnight zone where most animals can produce bioluminescence, Having a glowing gut full of bioluminescent prey is basically painting a target on your back. Any larger predator would see you lit up like a Christmas tree. So the abyssal comb jelly evolved crimson-colored stomach tissues that absorb the light produced by its bioluminescent prey. It is like having built-in blackout curtains for your digestive system. The pink color acts as camouflage in the deep, dark waters, keeping the jelly hidden. Even when it's just eaten something that glows, that's simultaneously genius and horrifying. Now let's go even deeper. We're talking about depths beyond 4,000 meters now, into territories that most marine biologists have barely explored. This is where we find Siphonophores so And oh man, whoa. these things are a trip. Technically, they are not jellyfish either. They are colonial organisms made up of thousands of tiny specialized individuals called zooids all working together but they look like jellyfish on steroids, so let's talk about them. The giant siphonophore, Praia dubia, can reach lengths of over 130 feet. That's longer than a blue whale, longer than any dinosaur that ever lived. It is one of the longest animals on the planet, Priod. These things are basically living strings of nightmare fuel floating through the abyss. Each part of the colony has a specific job. Some parts swim, some feed, some reproduce, some defend. 
They are like a bizarre underwater assembly line, except the entire assembly line is also alive and can sting you. And then there is the genus Arena. Deep sea siphonophore is found at depths between 1,600 and 2,300 meters. These creatures have evolved red bioluminescent lures that look and move exactly like small coke pods. They are literally using glowing false prey to attract fish, making them twitch and dart through the water like swimming coke pods. It is sophisticated enough that it fools fish into swimming right into their stinging tentacles. That is not just survival. That is tactical deception on a level that would impress a military strategist. You might be wondering, why are deep sea jellyfish so much more elaborate and bizarre than their shallow water cousins? Well, it comes down to the environment. In the deep sea, food is scarce, like really scarce. There is no sunlight for photosynthesis, so everything relies on marine snow the constant rain of dead material and feces falling from the surface, or on eating each other. The pressure is immense, temperatures hover just above freezing, and it is darker than any night you have ever experienced. To survive here, you need to be efficient, patient, and creative. Bioluminescence becomes crucial. In the surface waters, you can see your prey just fine with ambient sunlight. But down here, light is a language. Jellyfish use it to attract prey, scare predators, find mates, or in the case of the Atolla, call for backup. About 90% of deep sea animals can produce their own light. It is not optional, it is a necessity. The gelatinous body plan also makes way more sense down here. At these depths, having a rigid skeleton would require massive amounts of energy and resources that simply are not available. But a gelatinous body? It is mostly water, requires minimal energy to maintain, and handles pressure like a champ. The Giant Phantom. Jelly's body can withstand pressures of 40,000 kilopascals. That is 5,800 pounds per square inch. A human body would be crushed instantly, but the jelly just exists. No problem. And those elongated tentacles and arms make perfect sense when you realize how sparse prey is down here. If you are sitting in the dark, waiting for something edible to drift by, you want as much surface area as possible to increase your chances of catching something. It is like casting the world's most patient net. Now, here is the part that should concern us all. These deep sea jellyfish are incredibly vulnerable to environmental changes, even though they live in one of the most stable environments on Earth. Climate change is causing ocean temperatures to rise and oxygen levels to drop even in the deep sea. We are also polluting these depths with microplastics and disturbing them with deep sea mining operations. And here's the thing. We barely know anything about these creatures. The giant phantom jelly has been spotted 120 times in 126 years. We do not even know how many species of deep sea jellyfish exist. Scientists estimate we have only explored about 5% of the ocean, and most of that exploration has focused on shallower waters. Think about it this way. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, one of the world's leading deep sea research organizations, has conducted thousands of dives over decades, and they have only seen certain species a handful of times. The Stygio medusa gigantea? Nine sightings. That's it. We know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the deep ocean on our own planet, and we are already impacting these ecosystems before we even fully understand them. But here is what really gets me. These jellyfish are not just weird curiosities. They are vital parts of deep sea food webs. The Atala is one of the main predators on deep sea shrimp. The giant phantom jelly competes with squids and even whales for prey. Siphonophores like Nanomaya bejuga are primary predators of krill. They are not just living down there in isolation. They are integral to the functioning of the largest ecosystem on Earth. And some of these jellies have symbiotic relationships we are only beginning to understand. Small fish called Thalassobathia pelagica actually shelter inside the giant phantom jelly's billowing arms, using it for protection. In return, the fish removes parasites from the jelly. They will even find each other again if separated, using specialized sensory organs to detect the low-frequency movements of the jelly's bell. That is not just random association. 
That is a genuine partnership in one of the harshest environments imaginable. If you have ever played Subnautica, you know that sinking feeling when you leave the safe shallows and enter the deeper, darker biomes. That moment when the water turns inky and you start encountering things that look nothing like the fish you are used to. That is not just game design, that is based on reality. The progression from normal to utterly alien is real, and it happens over the course of just a few thousand meters of descent. The game Dredge captures this too, where the deeper you fish, the more disturbing your catches become. Art imitates life, and in this case, life is genuinely stranger than fiction. I know what you are probably thinking. Cool story, but why should I care about jellyfish I will never see that live in places I will never go? Why care, sus sauce? Fair question, but here's the thing. These organisms have been around for 500 million years. They survived mass extinctions that wiped out the dinosaurs. They have adapted to literally every marine environment on the planet, from warm tropical shallows to the frigid Hadal trenches. They are living records of evolutionary innovation, and they are doing things with biology that we are still trying to understand. Scientists are studying jellyfish venom to develop new medicines. The bioluminescence mechanisms in deep sea jellies have led to advances in medical imaging. Understanding how these creatures survive extreme pressure could inform everything from submarine design to space exploration. The antifreeze proteins in some deep sea species might help us preserve organs for transplant or develop better cold storage. This is not just about satisfying curiosity, these creatures hold potential solutions to problems we haven't even fully identified yet. And if we're being honest, there's something deeply humbling about knowing that beneath the surface of our oceans, in the permanent darkness, there are creatures so alien that they barely seem real. Jellyfish with alarm systems that summon bigger predators. Colonial organisms longer than blue whales made of thousands of cooperating individuals. Transparent predators that give birth through their mouths. It's like cosmic horror, except it's not on some distant planet. It's right here, right now, drifting through the abyss below us. So the next time you're at the beach and you see a little jellyfish bobbing near the shore, remember? That's the cute version. That's jellyfish on easy mode. The deeper you go, the weirder they get, and the more they resemble something from another world entirely. And the fact that we're only now beginning to explore and understand these creatures. That should excite and terrify us in equal measure. We've barely scratched the surface. Or in this case, we've barely scratched the depths. And who knows what other jellyfish species are down there, drifting in the dark, waiting to be discovered. Given what we've already found, I'm both eager and slightly afraid to find out. If you made it this far, thanks for diving deep with me into the weird world of deep sea jellyfish. We're so close to hitting 100,000 subscribers and Honestly, the fact that so many of you are as weirdly fascinated by ocean nightmares as I am is both reassuring and slightly concerning. If you want more deep sea horror mixed with science, check out the video on deep sea gigantism next. Trust me, it gets worse or better, depending on your perspective.